Welcome to another video and today we're going to explore running an Arduino compatible board at just over 1 GHz. As you can see we've tried some forced air cooling to ensure our chip stays cold. The Teensy 4 has board options available to configure the clock speed and it also advises if you need additional cooling to prevent the chip from overheating and shutting down. This board can already run at over 800 megahertz without additional cooling but we're going to add some as we want to run constantly at around one gigahertz without risking burning the board out so to make our heatsink we've taken an old gpu heatsink and we've measured the chip on the teensy board and then we're just going to cut a segment out of our heatsink which has got the most cooling fins available to ensure we get the maximum cooling effect from it of course, a number of heat sinks are available to stick to the 12mm square chip for a very reasonable price from various retailers and they often come with adhesive tape to make mounting it to your board easier because you can just stick it onto the chip. So we're going to need a little thermal paste just to help the heat transfer to ours as we don't have the adhesive. So we're just going to apply a very small amount of that to our board and as always Less is more when you're messing with thermal paste. You don't want it creeping out the edge and all over the rest of your circuit board as it's a nightmare to remove. The Teensy does also have code configurable clock speeds and over temp alarms that you can configure. So you can actually adaptively clock the board within its thermal limits depending on the environment it's in and whether it's got any cooling attached. You can also overclock the CPU beyond the 1 gigahertz mark all the way up to around 1.2 theoretically but it can become unstable don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video and do check out our other videos on our channel for various other arduino topics so here we've got our chart of all of our temperature data and we can see at the top this is the gigahertz chip with its small heatsink attached and then the line at the very bottom, the flat line essentially, that's what happened when we ran the same speed with our forced air cooling. So as you can see, the, the drop is significant. And we can also compare the 816 megahertz speed from without any heatsink attached to when we attach the small one, which again is considerably lower. So this will definitely help keep your chip cool and extend its life. So we can also then compare the prime numbers which were calculated and we can see by area we've calculated far more as the clock speed has risen. Now Paul at Teensy has a brilliant core mark library and we've just taken some of the scores he's already built from that to compare different boards using various calculations. And as you can see the massive area on the left is the Teensy 4 which is comparable to a number of other boards such as the ESP32 and Douay and so forth. So as you can see there's a lot of power available in these boards and if you do ever need a bit more you could just add your little heat sink to start getting you to a gigahertz but it may still be a bit warm in which case you might then want to go all the way and add a, a laptop fan as we did here and it looks quite good.